I don't give a flying f I'm downloading this. The moment, the moment I finish this, I'm installing this game. Hello everyone, welcome in. My name is Kai Zamis. I'm a director, cinematographer and writer based in the South of the UK. And today in this video, we're going to be looking at two cinematics from the Warframe franchise. I'll be honest with you guys, I've seen a couple of still images from the Warframe, or I believe that's what they're called, Warframes, and the designs, they look absolutely bonkers. How this video is going to work today is I'm going to give you my reaction to both the cinematics. Then afterwards, I'm only going to break down one of the cinematics and that'll be my personal favourite from the two. Doesn't mean one's better than the other, it's just my personal opinion. And speaking of opinions, let me know in the comment section down below which of these two cinematics, which one you preferred, and more importantly, why. Right then, with all that said and done, let's go, shall we? Play the tape. I thought we'd start at the beginning. Apparently this was the first Warframe cinematic out, and so that's the official cinematic opening trailer. So yeah, cool. Deep bassy tones, For generations nice. you've slept. No purpose. Oh, I like the colours. No call to wake you. Got a voiceover. Voice of God is what you call it in film psychology. Oh, that was a nice transition. Wow. Loving the lighting. It's beautiful, isn't it? As in the, the quality. Grenier. Look at those. Seeds from the ruins of the old war. Swallowing colonies whole. I like the design of those, they look really cool. But there's still hope. This is gorgeous, isn't it? All the low-key lighting. It's very cinematic. It's got a very Hollywood feel to it. Tell by the, the smooth motion of the camera. The Tenno. Monuments of an ancient warrior caste. Scattered across frail worlds. Oh, is this is when they were alive. Hey, what a design. Yo! Fucking dog, mate. <laughs> okay, I'm sold. Basically, space ninjas, right? Yeah, I'm sold on this. Really like the the costume design. Oh, that's stunning. Boom. Yeah. I only went and got the dog got the fucking blade for him. Oh, do we go to each one? Do we see a bit of backstory of each one? Oh, mate, this is dope. I did a motorbike commercial, a motorcycle commercial like that. Do you see each one? Kind of a smile, this is awesome. Oh, is that she got more like kinetic power? I prefer the first one more than it looks more like a ninja. More of a close and up close sort of fighter. What the fucking way the camera's moving? That is amazing. I'll oh, get multiple. Yeah. 
Yes, mate. <laughs> it was a sound effect. Wow, she's proper powerful, that one, isn't she? It's like having a force, isn't it? I think he's got a proper bow and arrow and all. Yo, how is this not like a movie or something? Bringing an end to an empire. Yeah, I think you would. Then they left. Oh, what the fuck? Forgotten. She can bring them all back. We need you. Like a dream. Oh. She, she sort of disappeared, did she? Wake up, Tenno. Boom. Cut to black. And it's free, is it? This game? I'm not going to lie. I'm sold. That was absolutely ridiculously good. Um, yeah, there's so many things. I, I Just by watching that, the next cinematic is going to have a hard time beating that one because to me, that was like up here level. That was amazing. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> So the next cinematic we're looking at is the new War Expansion Story date reveal trailer. And I've noticed it's only 2 minutes and 54 seconds. So already it's going to have a hard time beating the other one because we've got so much for it. Uh, as in duration that it was just so good. But anyway, I might change my opinion after I've watched this. So yeah. Straight into it. What's that? Like a fucking bug. Oh, is that the... Um, that's the girl, isn't it? From the first one, who woke him up. Looks like her. Or is it like a race of people? No, it looks like her. Oh, look at the colour palette on this one. She's a tenor. That's what they look like. Oh, mate, what's she got in her arms? Oh, he's like a rhino, that one. Oh, that's one from the first one I liked. Yeah, I would have totally uh, want to be someone like that. Visual effects on this is incredible. Oh, dude, what the hell? She broke out of her armor. Wow, this this is insane. This one's very cryptid, as in, in what I can get from the messaging. But the first one was more, a little more of a linear story. Wow. Again, that was 
beautiful. Um, it was it was a stunning story, but it was a very difficult story. I believe you know the other one had more of a, a if you're a cold caller looking in on these things, it's very hard to get attached to these very quickly. This made a little bit more sense only because I'd seen the first one. If I'd have just jumped straight into this one, I would have really struggled with it. But the other one was the opening, wasn't it? It was more of a welcome, welcome into the fold of this is the franchise. I definitely think I know which one I'm going to break down. Right then, so let's break this down, shall we? M for Mature. Straight away, our establishing shot, it's just space. But what I find really interesting about it is when we play it through, the camera is not just moving backwards, it has like a rotation on it which just makes it a little bit more interesting to visually look at. And I almost think it's setting the seed to what most of the camera work is going to be doing. You are really on a trip with this. You know, you, the way the camera works, it was beautifully done. But also with an establishing shot, I understood, as I said, what sort of genre we're looking at or where, where we're setting the story. I know we're out in world. Like most Star Wars, they always start with a space shot. Nine times out of ten they do. And this... I just think it's a great way to really sort of set the scene. For generations you've slept. Then we've got a voiceover. You know, the voiceover is the voice of God when it comes to film psychology. They're there just to give you little tidbits of information, but not tell you the whole thing because we want to visually see that unfold on screen. No Look at the camera. No Open abyss. No All these colours are just... It wasn't just black, do you know what I mean? It was really interesting, and then they used it to obviously come into the iris of the eye. It's great. And immediately we have a connection with this character. And the reason why we have a connection with this character, because we're starting with the eye. The eyes is the most important part, and it's how you can instantly connect with the character or what they're think thinking or what they're what current condition that they're in normally. In this case, her, her eyes are very dead here, aren't they? Let's be real. She's underwater. And then she comes to life. And what I liked about it was that it went with the sound, didn't it? Water, water, water. And then the, the bassy tones kicked in. Actually, that brings me to my first thought. Let me just quickly go back to the opening frame. Did it have, was it music or was it nothing but Foley? Oh, interesting. It's nothing but Foley. See, that is another way to how to instantly draw in your viewers. It's just rather than being a soundtrack immediately coming in. Star Wars, you use the soundtrack because it's a very iconic thing. But with this, they use sound effects of space. To really draw you in. And it does draw you in because all you're doing is listening to that bassy tones. You know, mix that with that and the water sound. It was... A, it's a fantastic little mix, isn't it? Just listening. And the bass. Look at this. Just look at this. This lighting. It sets the tone immediately. If it's very bright, I know it'd be quite fluffy. Um, sort of franchise or at least a cinematic, but it wasn't. Look at the blacks. They're dark. I can barely see the face. But yet, here we go. We've got a little catchment in her eyes because they want you to look at her eyes. But yeah, it's it's just beautifully done. Obviously, the water is dark, but it really did set the tone. If you've ever seen like, um, like a Mission Impossible or an action film and they're underwater, it had a very different vibe from this underwater. I understood what sort of universal dark tones that they want to tell with this by the lighting alone. Beautiful. Really nice camera movements there. Let's go back into it. Okay, so we're pretty much static here. She's center frame. She comes up. The camera is tracking backwards. I mean, in this case, a very fast dolly and backwards. And what I love about it is they're doing it to, again, it's another establishing shot. You don't kind of realize it at the time, but you're like, okay, where the hell are we? But then as the camera's coming back, boom, she comes up into frame. But what I love about it is the kinetic energy of it as well. She continues to come forward as the camera goes backwards and it gives her momentum as she comes out of the water more of an oomph on screen. Watch. 
and it made it look more like, <gasps> it made it look more, you know, like she's in more panic because the camera was letting us do that. Then the camera done a slow track, a uh, stop, sorry, and then it sort of goes rounder. Let you just check out that motion. Even does a little pull focus as well. I just noticed it on the outer rim here. Let's go back five again. Watch it. Okay, so we're on that, you can see there's almost like a bokeh shift off from the background to here, where it, the camera lens pulls focus. She is here. She is sharp. Look at this, the bokeh. Yeah, she means it's out of depth. So obviously when we're looking at our depth and the distance within the frame, it's all about her. And then when she turns, then let the camera then go sharp because they want us to go where she is going. Look at the camera, it's always moving. It really has that Hollywood, that movie feel or filmic cinematic feel. And cinema is movement. Let me just quickly go back and look at her eyes. Look at this. Look at this lighting. Lovely overhead lighting. Still getting light beams in her eyes because that's where we want to look on screen. Camera's doing like an orbiting shot. And because she's moving in the same direction as the camera's going, it looks more like it's kinetic, a kinetic look to it. She's surveying the grounds. So it's only a bit that kind of ruins it with the camera move movement for me personally, but it, they're, they're trying to go... <gasps> I feel like it was a bit like too harsh like whoop, and a bit too stagnant with, with the way it rolled out. It should have rolled it. It should have been a little bit more movement. So it still felt like her head. So let me go back five and you watch it again. It's all very floaty, isn't it? Because it's a head. And when it's up, it's all zooming in. It's very, it looks a bit, a bit, it looks a bit robotic, a bit like it's done on a gimbal type thing. It just looks like it's done with bad keyframes and it kind of pulls you out of the illusion. But it's enough because we're like, right, okay, next shot. Here we go. Seeds. And then it comes into her, uh, you know, we're dollying forward because we're telling us this is an important moment to her. See that? You get a lot of that Seeds. in motion with camera from work. If you want a, for example, you get a lot of this in, in anything involving a vehicle, you'll have the camera tracking one direction and the subject, whatever it may be, coming in the opposite direction. And what that does is it amplifies the speed of what a subject is moving. Let me go back into so you see it for yourself. From the ruins of the old war. Woo. And that's a very clever way of doing it. It's by you you kind of yeah, you just go the opposite direction. And if you have it on a you have a sort of lens that's sort of zoomed in a little bit as well, it'll emphasize more speed. But this is beautifully Swallowing soft and smooth. Ball. See a lot of action films right now would have been really shaky then. Oh no, they're coming, let's go back ten. You see it, but the camera's still quite the nice and smooth. It has a more of a Hollywood feel. Swallowing colonies whole. There's a little bit of movement with it, but it's not like shaky cam like you do find in a lot of, you know, sort of modern uh, cinematography. Oh. Especially with this running shot. Look where she's running. The that would be. Of the old but they really want you to see Swallowing what she's seen. And I think a great way of doing that is because they're introducing us to the world. So we want to see everything. If it was really shaky, you couldn't really see what the hell was going on. Look at this, making it look like the world is full by making big shots. Look at, they're filling all the layers up. It's what I love about Star Wars and things. Like, I keep going back to Star Wars because it's, it's a, you know, it's a gigantic space opera, but they're very believable worlds when you're there. Uh, the more the older ones, not necessarily the new ones. The new ones are a bit too visually effecty, should we say, as in sort of CGI. Or the later ones, it was very, it was a lot more practical effects, which makes it more believable. So here... Looking at the world, it looks believable because we've got loads of depth. And it's the same thing when we go to this one. So they've got all this. So we've got three layers here. You've got your foreground, your main ground, and your background. But that by doing that, it's one, it's making her look faster. Like she's running faster because you get all the foreground elements like making with sound effects. But also, look, because we've got all this space, it makes the world feel very lived in. Where a lot of people go wrong in their world building or because of practical or uh, sorry the budget restraints they'll make the world feel very very small and when it comes to an establishing shot they'll have hardly anything in it but the clever way of doing it is bring the camera in closer 
you can make it look like you've got a crowd of people, for example. Say, for example, you've got a gig or filming a, a gig or something and you've got like five people there and you've got to make it look like a crowd. I've done it before. You have to huddle them together and do lots of close-ups, but somehow still make it feel like the world's big by having the background out of focus. But with CGI sort of like this, we can really fill the world up. But there's still... Hope. Look how cinematic that was. She came running up to her marker. Obviously, I'm no, I'm talking as if these are real talent. Camera is dollying in. But there's... The camera brings it into her eyes. Look, we are invested in this character because the eye movement is the best way of doing it. And they want us to look at her eye because they put the brightest and whitest light in with attachment. So our eyes are immediately going to go there. Let's go back five and go into it. But there's still hope. I love that. When she says there's still hope, you notice the colour palette changed. It's all very blue, very, there's a bit of green here. It's quite dark, isn't it? Blue, negative colours with black, lots of blackness, yeah? Hope. Hope. The camera stabilises a bit. It dollies forward. Look at all this colour. But yeah, it's, we still know it's a dark world because look at the shadows. Look at this low-key lighting. It's also very cinematic. Look, she's backlit. Well, technically, she's actually sidelit here, but this surrounding has got this beautiful backlighting, which makes it more cinematic. See that little connected cut there? Camera went up with the birds. And then she starts going up with them. Look, look at this. Oh, silhouetted shot. It looks very cinematic. You want your stuff to look cinematic if you're doing drawings, photography, whatever. Put, a, put your key light from behind and then use a fill light from the front to pick up the details at the front. But anything shot from behind will look more cinematic. It also raise your production values, either it be drawings or whatever it is that you guys are doing. Yeah, the camera's always moving. Look, we're doing a, a pedestalling down now. I really like the way they've also, they've done sort of shallow depth of field to also make it look more cinematic. Cast. And what you, I think what it is as well, talking about that shot from earlier on, where the camera did that head movement, didn't it? And it did that zoom in. I think it felt completely kind of fake. Because what, what it is with it, if you notice with this, I'm going to go back 10 and play into this. This looks like it's shot on prime lenses. Prime lenses means it's a set focal length. And they're using the pull focus to direct our eyes where to go. So she was sharp, then they racked the focus. So it was then onto the Tenno themselves. Look at the way they lit. And it looks like it's done. It looks more filmic because a couple of things, really. You've got your widescreen mask here. Yeah, so it looks so it looks like it's shot. So 235.1 mask is what we call it. So it looks more filmic. It looks like it's shot on anamorphics, which gives it a more of a filmic look. That's what we shoot. Primarily try to shoot movies on. Uh, a lot of the commercials that I do, I try to shoot anamorphic because it has a more of a cinematic feel in your glass. And you shoot on prime lenses. Normally. You can obviously shoot another on different focal lengths and pull focuses and whatnot, but um, and different sort of length in the... Uh, the actual lens itself, but most of the time, yeah, you'll be shooting on primes. Look at that interesting way of storytelling. So they did a thing, but it was the music that told me that we went back in time. It wasn't a flash to white. And did it match up with his knee? Yes, it did. Look, it was a match cut. Look, that was perfect. It was an actual match cut. Look, really interesting. Normally you always get like flashes to whites and things like that just to sort of really indicate what's going on. You know, for people that are kind of like, oh my God, what is this? But that was, that was told quite beautifully. See what I mean about that zooming on the lens? It kind of works for this, but if it was, pro you'd probably have like a, an individual shot of it coming in. But because they had to zoom in, yes, it looks kind of cool, but it kind of, see what I mean? It pulls it away from that cinematic look or that vibe that you get with it but they've done it to obviously emphasize it see what i mean it's very interesting isn't it how video it makes it feel i always say this to clients all the time it's you get a um we shoot films for the stuff that we create because it looks very cinematic we, we, it's all about the movement and that's why we try to keep things set parameters so we make it look more movie like when you start putting like the focal lengths or like that zoom that you get it almost looks a bit video-y, unless it's a stylistic one. So if you're like Edgar Wright, 
the director Edgar Wright, who done like um, Sean the Dead and Hot Fuzz. He's his set east. He's he's still cinematic because the way it's done, they're like they're very quick rack zooms, and then it's fast paced editing because it, it keeps. But you're not like that one, for example. It was a very like a very documentary style, wasn't it? Great for setting up a establishing shot, though. That was. This is great. So we've got that. I understand the type of characters they were by the music, by the drums. And then look, we've lost our audio, as in the music is gone. And by doing that, it really draws you into what this character is like. You know, we've got our subject up here, our main framing. But then what's going on back here is with real action. As he got there, they racked the focus. And look, even I'm whispering. It's, do you know what I mean? It, it's... It's contagious. What happens on screen makes you change. I started whispering because it was a whispery scene. How clever that was, because we've had loud music, and then we're going into a quiet section. And then you whisper. Have you ever had it when someone talks to you in a whisper and then you whisper back? It's the same thing. Film can do the same thing, or audio can. Audio is 70% of your picture. And that was great, wasn't it? Really, they really set that up with the dog as well. I like that. Okay, why was that good? Why was that different from any sort of Hollywood blockbuster? I'll tell you why. We can see what's happening. This had more of a martial arts cinematography style to it and a direction, which I absolutely loved and prefer. I can see what this Tenno is doing. And martial arts is a dance. All fight scenes are a dance. Yes, you will still have close-ups and you want close-ups. But imagine this was shot like um, The Born Identity. You can't see it. So when you watch martial arts, you know, we, we can see all the motion. But it still looked epic, didn't it? Because they're filling all the layers, all the, sh all the shots up. All the framing's been filled up. Look at that. That was brilliant, wasn't it? Oh, my God. So we've got like a one shot going on. Done all his motion. Yeah, the camera's moving around. The camera then does a quick orbiting shot around the subject as he falls. Tilt up. Boom, what a fantastic way. And I'll call that the thread of storytelling. So you are led on a journey throughout the cinematography and the journey of the film. That's exactly what that was. And that was that was chef's kiss. And then look, it's kind of keeping with the head movement, isn't it? And then he's off. Got a couple of slow motion bits. Love it. Let's go back. I want to see that again. Okay, so what I love about it is we, we're continuing, not with the one motion, but, we're, but look, look, it just goes with the blade. Oh, so good. Let's go back five, watch it again. But it feels like it's really shot on the camera. Gorgeous. See, that's fine to have a close up, but I can still roughly see what he was doing. Oh my God, I love this choreography. Look at this move. Wow. I love it. So good. And the camera is moving with him, so it gives him the trajectory that he's going, more momentum. Oh, mate, this is absolutely blowing my mind. This is awesome. I love it. This is proper martial arts. I can see what the fuck is going on, and I'm getting excited about it. It's, they, it's kind of got that mixture of Power Rangers, but obviously way cooler than Power Rangers. It's got a mixture of... Um, but that, do you know what I mean? Like... People in costumes moving, but it's got the gore. It's not quite as gory as like one of my favourite franchises, and that's the guy of a bang. It's a it's a spectacle. Do you know what I mean? You really feel like you're the camera is led with him because he's centre frame. Look at that. That whole motion, he was centre frame. He's coming in, boom. He's just a little bit, boom. Centre frame runs off to the screen right. Centre frame. I mean, it keeps him in the middle, so you keep with him. So we do feel like we are his eyes. We see only what he sees in his peripheral. And how clever that is, by just keeping your subject in the centre of the frame, that will do the trick for you. Wow. See that, wow, that, that one shot looks really powerful of the Tenno? Look at this. Why did that look really powerful? Because the camera dollied into him it was an important moment for this character he hasn't even got eyes yet 
we feel connected with him because it's it's roughly framed here. I've had that before. People go, so you know, you always talk about closest of the eyes, and it's very important. But how do you get around a character that doesn't have any eyes by having it still here? It your brain will fill in the gaps and how you connect with them. Because then what happens is, is because it's that close, you then look at the rest of the body motion to tell you what they're feeling. I understood what this Tenno character was feeling. Love that. Oh my god. This is, I've got to go back and watch your skin. I apologise that this video is long and I hope you guys stick around because this is awesome. There's so much to learn here. The way he, look, the way he runs and the way the camera went with him. It kept him, he's still sent a frame. It, what an interesting way of doing it. You, it's because the camera's doing that. You feel like you're still with him and you are him. This is exactly what he sees and feels. This is beautiful. Look at that. Wow, I'm just, I'm just shocked. And another thing about lighting, if you're doing drone shots or anything like that, Try to shoot it in sunset, which this is, or so golden hour or sunrise and that. And the reason being is because you get loads of texture on your shots. Look at these lovely long shadows. Gorgeous. The lighting is softer as well, as in on our subjects. But you get lovely texture. If you shoot in the middle of the day, everything's all really harsh and it's just it's not great unless you've got huge diffusers going on. Look at that. Cinematic, please. Why is it cinematic, guys? Look at that. Look at this. It's like a fucking picture, isn't it? Gorgeous. And look at our layers. Foreground, May ground, background being the sky. Brightest, whitest light on screen is here. They want you to look. You're going to look anyway. But look at they just fill it all up, don't they? What I love about that, it was very slow and then he zoomed in. It, 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 it sped up, didn't it? Very slow, very slow. Speed ramp. Now, it almost looks like they sped him up a little bit just to make sure they bring the impact down. That's stunning. Oh, I've got to watch that again. Yeah, that's really interesting. I'm going to watch it again. But I'm going to go frame. Comes crashing down. There's just, just brief shots, isn't there? But it's enough to tell your brain what is going on. See that? It was a whoop, 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 bang. And then they did it out. They did a flash. They did the cut on the biggest flash because that's blocked most of your framing up up perfectly to your wider on the outside and just to show the destruction they could have done it from it coming out and following it out and blowing up that way but this doing it this way because you've already had a previous shot of it from earlier on it just looked like more it was more epic and you can really see the destruction how the fuck that dog survive all that oh then the dog comes walking in <laughs> but see what i mean about the shadows so if this was shot middle of the day, that shadow would but be here. It'd look dog shit. Ah, dog, dog shit. Okay. Um, but look at the shadows. You can see everything. It just looks so much nicer, doesn't it? Yeah. Shoot beginning or end of the day if you can. Or if you are going to shoot in the middle of the day, make sure you've got lots of diffuser. So bed sheets or just buy some actual diffuser because what it does it diffuses that light so you can make your subjects softer. But you're not going to be able to get nice long shadows like this. Not unless you deliberately direct a light. You need a powerful light, at least 300 to 600 watts. That's what we like to use. Wow. I'm going to go back five and watch that. Camera's dolly in. These are beautiful transitions, aren't they? That's really interesting. Does that, that dog's almost got a head like a lotus. Not the printing. That was stunning. So again, that's called a match cut, guys. Okay, so you match the frame, or you try to match it as much as possible. So you cheat. So the thing is, the camera's moving. But look at that! Look, boom. See, lovely. Done such a good job. Look at this lighting, the darkness of it. Goes to show you that was all very colourful, wasn't it? Yeah, it's still got deep blacks, which tells us it's more of a grounded, believable world, and gory world. And the music as well. But there we are. Look at this lighting. Again, shot at golden hour. I've obviously got haze or smoke in here because we can see the light beams in here. If you want to show, if you ever want to create light beams or that illusion of light beams, that's how you do it. Okay. You would 
you fill your room or get some aerosol, spray in a can or something like that. So they call it like mist in a can or atmospheric spray. And that's how you create these light beams. This is really interesting. I, I, it's funny. I didn't realize this is how the, the commercial was going to go or this cinematic was. But yeah, I think that's really nice. And we're always keeping when we re meet them. We, again, we have these very clear, clear shots quite quickly of their, this area. We can connect with the character. Look at all that coming through the, the smoke just to make it look like we're keeping the momentum. Right over her shoulder. It's awesome, isn't it? They're really telling you the type of characters that you can be in this game, aren't they? And by having this moment... But it was nice, wasn't it? It wasn't too much. Like The first one really set the scene of what a Tenno can do. And that was like, okay, what can this character do? And they didn't really show you much, did they, really? If you're going through it, it's literally... The camera shakes just to emphasise what's going on. It's all done in a reflection of her visor. Music's kicking in. Falling. Again, we're using... So a lot of people say, well, how do you make something look fast? There's a couple of ways you can do, do that. One, you can change the shutter angle. Um, I won't go into too much detail about the shutter angle, but there's different ways of... If I'm shooting a sporting event, like most of the time you'll shoot on a 180 degree shutter angle. Um, but then you can change it to like 90 and it'll be more rapid. That's one way you can make something look more intense. But it's not your subject is that you need to make look fast. It's the background that you need to make look fast. But like I was talking to about the car thing. They made her look fast because everything else around her was moving fast. And it's the same thing with this. This does look like it's shot in like normal 180 degree shutter angle. But look, we keep loving these one one shots. But it was the background that made her look like she was going fast. And look at that, look. They keep with the visor because we want to come back to the visor. They look, they, they let you see everything in the visor. You have all that carnage, don't you? And then you have these these pocket moments of silence. It's a really great way. A bit like if you ever do a battle scene or if you do something really intense, you must have pocket scenes in there to break it up. You can't just have carnage, carnage, carnage. You need the moment of people talking or people staring intently like someone's just died. They're like, no! And they stare at you intent or they stare at them intently. You need those moments to break it up. Because otherwise what happens is you're your brain is overloaded, it's sort of sensory overload. By having these pocket moments, you then start to listen. And like I started whispering. There we go. Okay, uh, there's a moment of silence. Again, coming in. It's interesting. They changed the cut frame on that and said this time. This camera movement on this one is incredible. Dude, I've got to go back 10. I can't even keep up with that. That's just fucking bananas. How interesting, though, because... So this is what I was talking to you about. I'll oh, say, right, perfect. This is great. I said to you, how do you make a subject look fast? Okay, and it's your background elements that would do that. But this is the complete reverse. What they do is, because the background's not moving, because they, this Tenno is slowed down time, they keep him looking fast by... It keeping the camera close to him by keeping your camera close. So I'm about, I'm on a wide angle lens here and it looks kind of like this. But if I start bringing the camera in close, uh, my hands in close to the lens, it looks more rapid. So I'm like, it looks faster. And the reason being is because I'm close to the lens. And because the timing is slowed down for all this, they're like, right, so we're moving back. Look, the camera's out, moving in. The camera's got a bit of a shake. And just to, so your eyes don't get too bored of it, Fuck it, we'll do a 360 shot here. Whoa! And it goes with his motion. Do you know what I mean? It's fantastic. I love that. Keeping with it. Camera's flipped over. And again, if it if it they didn't have that, I think this shot would have felt probably a little bit too long. 
it wouldn't have given the momentum, but it also shows you how sort of flexible or what these characters are like when it comes to agility. I have no idea what the hell that was. Look at this. So the camera's swooping around and we're using the camera movements now. See, there was a zoom in then. That's kind of, it's okay because of what it is. And you see a lot of this in anime and CGI stuff. So where normally in movies, you wouldn't necessarily see this. If you did, they're trying to make it a very a, a specific visual effect or visual shooting style. So um, I've seen it, I can't think off the top of my head, which I've seen it. But they're like the zoom in and the zoom back out. Like Zack Snyder's very slow motion. He'll have those pocket moments with this one. A lot of CGI will do this. So to emphasize that slice up the chest, they zoomed in. Big town. Whoop. Zoom in. Otherwise, it wouldn't have look, looked as epic if it didn't. And because it is on a zoom, they kept with the camera rules, which is, so as in the lens rules, the more you zoom in, the more epic it looks. They've zoomed out. Things start to slow down a bit. Dude, that bit. Oh, I, I frothed in my pants with that. Mate, I got, I made my eyes water. Excitement. And do you know what makes it so good is it's the Dutch angle. I felt like I was watching like On Back or something or a martial arts film where the camera's just trying to keep up with them. But look, what, if you don't know what a Dutch angle is, the Dutch angle is off its axis, okay? So you think where the horizon line is here, yeah? Look where this one is. It's there. And it filled more of the framing up. Whoever did this, this part, I would fucking buy you a beer. And then he climbs up and you're going with him. I just realised the whole thing's a one, isn't it? Every, the whole section, what makes it look more epic is it's a one shot. It's all like a one take thing. And by being that it's a one take, it keeps you drawn in. You're like, oh, it's like holding your breath. If you ever have those moments where you see people fall in water in films and you and they hold their breath and you go, <gasps> you, you just in, instinctively do it. A one shot, it makes it more intense because there's no cut. There's no, it's like blinking. Yeah, if you think of it like that, it makes more sense. A one shot is like keeping your eyes open for a long period of time. Your eyes start to water. It gets more intense, doesn't it? Trying to keep your eyes open. And that's exactly what they've done here by having all these moving parts and moving elements. They're always filling their they're always filling their frame up. You know, you know exactly where you you have to look because they're telling you where to look. They've put a right over here on camera left side or frame left because they want you to be looking over here. But she's sharp at the moment. They want you to look here at the moment. Do a little. We don't like those zooms, but it's kind of fine when it's anime. But it's the only way you can show that she pulled those people out. How do you show the force ability? You let the camera do it for you. Pull them out. And this motherfucker, I don't know what he just did. What did he do? He jumped up and went, what? Oh, he did like a spiral move. Oh, dude, that's dope. What a team. What an absolute team. That, to me, was like watching the Avengers. <laughs> I mean, they're all coming together. But look at this. Look, look at all the texture. Because again, look, they're shooting it at sunset. Got nice long shadows. Everything is soft lit. Got beautiful lighting. Backlit. Again, backlit again. They fought back. I don't give a flying fuck. I'm downloading this. The moment, the moment I finish this, I'm installing this game. And I really hope it's as cool as they've made this. I would watch a show on this. Like, I'm, I'm that invested in it. Fucking ninjas in space that, that's got gore levels in it. That's set in a dark universe because of all the lighting. If it looked like this, I'm sold. Take my money. Bringing an end to an empire. I'm going to be talking about, like, breaking it down as a filmmaker. And I'm just like... Fucking off. But the rough, 
the, as I said, what I've discussed already today is the, is the core principles of it. You know, we've got these one shotters. We've got the backlighting. The camera is moving with them. Look at that. We're moving really fast back because we want to emphasize the ships getting the hell out of here. If that was a slow movement, it'd have had a completely different feel to it. It'd have had a more of a, an emotional, like, oh, we, we did it, we did it. But it wasn't like that at all. They have to show that they need to get to an the hell out of here. This is really nice. Then they left. It's interesting. It's still like off its axis, isn't it? It still feels like a camera. They shot this. And there we go. Now our horizon line has returned. A moment of silence. But as I said, we're having lots of these moments where we are. It's all high intense action, but these little pauses make it go. Oh, they're breathers. They're you know they're setting the tone. No, sorry, setting the tempo of the film. Forgotten. I didn't quite get this bit. It's stunning. So she wasn't there. She's invisible. She obviously there was at one point. She's running away, isn't she? You guys have to let me know about that. She was there, wasn't she? Look, see, oh, she went up in a puff of smoke. And look, the lighting's changed. because. And what I find really interesting is normally when the lighting changes like that, you normally know something bad is coming. But yet it's actually the heroes, the protagonist, is affecting the antagonists. All because of the lighting. So we've lost our shadows, haven't we? As in, we've lost our lighting, that beautiful sunset. So what are we going to do now? Look, directional lighting is giving us these long shadows instead. Wake up, Tenno. Really powerful. Dollying in, we know something epic is going to happen. Wake Bump. Up. And, it, and it's beautiful, isn't it? They cut to black because that is where you are in control. And yeah, is that how it ends? And now it's Warframe Play 3 now. I just couldn't believe how excited I was. And there you have it. That was my reaction and breakdown of the Warframe cinematics. Thank you so much for being here, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video and that maybe that you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section what your favorite thing to learn about these cinematics was. And so, yeah, thank you so much again for being here and I'll see you on the next one. See you later. Bye-bye. Out of time.